Okay, so here's a way to think about perception So, let's say that this is the thing you're trying to look at I called that the thing in itself Now, that's a schematic of a thing in itself So the thing in itself, that's an old philosophical uh, concept And I think it came from Kant, but I'm not sure about that, it might be older than that And the thing in itself is what you could see if you could see everything about something, but you can't, so it's a hypothetical entity and maybe who, who knows, if, if I was looking at you like the thing in itself maybe I could see every level of your being from the subatomic up to the, up to this level of perception, and then beyond, I could see your family relationships I could see how they were nested in your societal relationships, economic relationships, political relationships the ecosystem as a whole, like I would see all these levels at the same time of course, I don't because I can't, what I see instead is first of all, you're radically simplified by my senses because they're just not acute enough to say, see you at a microscopic level and they're not comprehensive enough to see your connections across time so my senses filter a bunch of you from me right away and then, I'm also filtered from you by, my, by your willingness to act like I want while we're together because you could be doing all sorts of strange things at the moment but you're not and so, you're helping me simplify my perceptions of you by agreeing to play the same game that I'm playing while we occupy the same space and that's basically politeness that's the mark of someone who's well socialized you walk in somewhere, you get the game you play the game and you don't scare the hell out of everybody and that's, that's partly how we keep our emotions stabilized because, you know, if, if you're like a Freudian you think, well, as long as your ego is well constituted, you can keep your emotions under control it's like, yes and no, mostly no I like the Piagetian idea better, which is if you're well socialized, you're awake enough to identify the game that's going on wherever you go and then you play that game immediately, and so do all the other socialized primates and so then you can just understand the game, you don't have to understand them, thank God you can just understand the game, and as long as the game continues, you don't have to be nervous, because you know you at least know what's going to happen, and maybe you even know how to get what you want in that game and so, so that again, you, that's really worth thinking about, because we talked about this before, about why people want to maintain their culture it isn't just because their culture is a belief system that helps them orient themselves in the world it's because a belief system is a game that everyone who shares that belief system is playing and the fact that everybody's playing means nobody needs to get upset so it isn't like the belief system is directly inhibiting the emotions that isn't how it works so, and, and it's, it's not like the culture is just a belief system it's only secondarily a belief system, man mostly it's a game that people are actively engaging in that's way more important than the beliefs that go along with it you don't even need the damn beliefs, you know, that's why wolves and wolves can live with each other they don't know what the, they don't have a belief system exactly mostly they have a set of they have a game, it's the wolf game roughly speaking, and all the wolves know how to play it, and so that's that that's how they keep themselves organized in their packs a lot of it's externalized and so okay, so anyway, so the thing in itself that's a very complicated thing, it's got multiple dimensions multiple levels and then, it's worse than that, because not, it, it doesn't only have multiple levels, but all of those levels move across time and every one of those levels shifts as it moves across time and so, I like to think of the thing in itself like a symphony I think that's a good model, I think that's why we like music, in fact because music shows you a multi-level reality that unfolds and sh shifts across time within some parameters, right, because it's, it's not just chaos the, the music has an element of predictability and an element of unpredictability and it has these multiple levels, and that's sort of what, it, what everything in the world is like, it's what the world is like so this is a even that is just a conceptual model of the thing in itself, first of all, that's only got two dimensions instead of three because it could be a cube, and then it, it has, even a cube has three dimensions instead of four, because if that was a cube, adding the third dimension then it would also be a cube that would transform and shift as it moved across time 
and that's what the thing in itself is, but that's too damn complicated so then the question is, when you look at it, what do you see? and the answer is, to some degree it depends on what you want to use it for and so I would say, well here, look at the different ways you can look at this you might say, what is this? and somebody could say, well it's a rectangle and would you say that's correct? it's like, well it's not correct, because there's not a one to one correspondence, but it might be a useful conceptualization if you think about that as a box it could contain that and if you were carrying the box, you'd only have to be concerned about the box and so that would be fine, that's a good functional simplification that one's a little higher resolution, because it says, well yeah it's actually four rectangles and that one says, well wait think about that as an orchard that someone's looking at from the top you want to figure out how to walk from south to north well, you've got a little map there because you can think of those as bars instead of collections of dots Piaget showed that children will automatically do this so for example, if you take six dots and put them in a row and you take the same six dots and you stretch them out so the row is this much longer and then you ask the child where there are more dots the child will say that there are more dots where it's longer because they're flipping in some sense between the perception of the individual dots and the perception of the shape that the array of dots makes and so the shape is longer, because you can see it as a rectangle and so they think, well, longer is bigger, bigger is more there's got to be more dots so well, whoop and then there's this one, which is sort of an amalgam of this one and this one and then that one, there's that one, and that's the highest resolution model of that, that's still a simplification and, you know, what I like about this diagram is that you know, people say, well the facts are the facts, and what we're disagreeing about is our opinion about the facts it's like, no yes you have an opinion about the facts, but the world is so horribly complex that you can actually disagree about the facts themselves and I think an ideology does that to people very, very commonly so, I saw this movie once that Naomi Klein made if I tell you the same story, tell me, okay, because I don't want to tell you the same story, but I might so, she went down to Argentina after a bunch of money had got out of Argentina because of a financial collapse and she went to a factory that had been padlocked and it was a heavy machinery factory and uh, the workers had decided they were going to undo the padlocks and go build machines, you know to hell with the owner who shut it down and so, she went down and made this movie and followed these workers around and, you know, showed how catastrophic their lives had been because they'd lost their livelihood in this big financial crash and so that was really interesting, but then she went and interviewed the guy who owned the factory and she treated him like he was like a cipher in some sense instead of asking him how he got the factory, what he wanted to do with it, how it fit in with his life plans why he, why he shut it down instead of continuing it, you know he, she didn't get the backstory on him she just left him in the evil capitalist box and went on with the film, and it was, it was like, it wasn't like what she did wasn't true but it was only half true, and it was half true because she could perceive the complexity of the workers, having sympathy for them but as far as she was concerned, the, the enemy, the owner, had no complexity he was just bad capitalist, and that's how it was left in the movie I found it profoundly unsatisfying, because I wanted to know, okay, it's like you know that these workers are suffering, it's not self-evident that you want your damn factory closed, you'd think you'd want it open so you could be building things, it's like who are you? what are you doing? why is this justifiable? have a question about it well, you can take this infinite set of facts and then you subject it to your filters and you let some of the facts through, and they're facts but what about all the facts that you don't let through? that's the thing and that's what the gorilla video shows too, it's like, yeah, yeah, you got the basketball count right, but you missed the big primate and you might say, well, your priorities were a bit skewed in that circumstance, because you were rearranging the deck chairs as the Titanic sank, you know, as the, as the old joke goes and so it's very much useful to, to think always, well, you're, it isn't just your damn opinion that's biased, although it is it's your perceptions that are biased so, well and with your words it's even more, so you say, well, you can't see the thing in itself because it's too complex, so you perceive it simpler than it is and some of that perceptual simplification is dependent on your aims so that's a 
vicious one because it pulls the the value structure that you're ensconced within into your perceptions it pulls it into the realm of facts itself and then you do another I think about this as a uh, compression you know you can compress a photograph by getting rid of redundant information that's sort of what you're doing here so you're like one of these squares little black squares here black rectangles compresses all of those it's like we're going to treat those as if they're grayish black same thing happens here so we're blurring across them so we have a much less higher a much less high resolution image here so you take the thing in itself you perceive it as a low resolution representation and then you take that low resolution representation and you replace that with a word and so the word is a twofold compression and then when someone tosses you the word you unpack it into the low resolution perception and then maybe into the world itself if you can do that but probably not so that's what we're doing we're taking the complex world we fold it into a simple perception we fold that into a word we throw the word to someone else and they unpack it and the only way you can unpack it of course is if you've had enough similar experience so that you have the reference for the word already in your experience so which is why you have to use simplified language with children right because there's no point tossing a child a concept that he or she can't unpack so we, we compress a very complex reality into a through a very very small keyhole that's basically that's basically our cognitive processing